Hey everyone, uh, so in this build we're going to be saving our order, so we're going to start up by cleaning up a, a bit of a mess that I created when uh, setting up the um, the order product. Now the biggest problem here is that I ha we have the stock and the product and I think I was really tired, I don't know why. Or maybe the decision of the architecture was at the beginning of the product. It doesn't matter, right? The point is, we don't need this product here. Uh, why? Well, because we have the stock, and the stock already holds our product, and we can get it that way. So, what we're going to do, remove this product, right? Keep the stock, move the quantity to the bottom here, so we have a little bit of better understanding here. Uh, what we want to do is go into our product. Let's cut this out from here and let's put it into our uh, stock. So now we have a collection of order products. Let's rename this to order stock and order products, order stocks. And we want to do the same in our order, order stocks, close both of these. Now we want to go to application DB context and where we have this here, we want to uh, change the name of our table to order stocks as well and the foreign key we want to use the stock ID foreign key Okay, so just make sure all the names are matching so order stocks in our order order stocks in our stock and the product just remove it from there. So let's close all of this order product uh, Yeah, looking good. Okay, let's clean this up a little bit further Okay, so now let's run the migrations and uh, make sure our database is set up for this. So, .NET, if uh, startup uh, project, uh, we go to shop.ui and migrations and uh, order stock. Cool, now let's bring up the command and update database update rather cool let's quickly check the database i'll refresh it real quick let's go database my shop tables where our stock is there okay i think i'm happy with this okay so let's close this okay so now that our database is updated and ready to take in orders this episode may start so it's going to be fairly simple it's going to be what we were same pattern we've been building services throughout so you could probably guess how this episode's gonna go we're gonna go into our uh, method where we create the charge with stripe and this is where we want to create our order so let's go ahead into our application layer and let's create a new folder let's call it orders and let's put in our first service create order cool uh, again, same as before, make a constructor, bring out, bring in our application DB context, make it global, and let's create an async task, just return a boolean because we needed async because we're going to be saving the order, so uh, async, we want to return the handle to the service so our application doesn't hang okay and again same as before we want to create a class and we want to call it request right since we're going to be accepting a some data so and let's call it and let's accept it here okay let's return true for now since we are going to assume this is always going to work which and which it should considering we're always supplying correct data to it so now, what do we want to put into our request? Let's go into our payment CSHTML, and it's pretty much going to be this cart information in the cart order. So let's go into our get order from the cart order, and let's take this customer information here. Let's copy all of this data. Let's go into our create order, and let's put it in our request here. Another thing what we want to include here is our Stripe reference. Okay, and in our get order, uh, in our 
order we s we need the quantity and the stock id so let's create a public class stock let's give it to properties of stock id and quantity okay and let's put this prop in make a prop in here that is going to be a list of stock stocks okay cool let's go ahead here and let's call our new create order and let's pa pass our context let's call do and in here let's create a new create order request and let's fill this out so first name equals we want to go into cart order and we want to go into our customer information and we want to call first name let's get rid of this green line we need to call a wait here and this is not an async method yet so let's make it async All right, uh, put a comma here and let's copy this a few times. And let's just fill out the data. All right, another thing we want to include here is our Stripe reference. Let's move it up here. And again, uh, we, we actually, the Stripe preference, this time we don't want it to be to a customer because customer can have many orders, but rather we want to get it to the order ID right here. Okay, next thing we want to get the stocks and we want to get it into our cart order. And let's go into a product here and let's type in select import link. And let's create new create order stock objects right and stock id is going to be just stock id and quantity is just going to be quantity and let's make sure we call to list nice so we're creating an order and we're passing that to our model here so let's copy this uh, this big thing here and in here, let's create a var order equals new create order, all right? And here, what we want to do is we actually want to make a new order, okay? Instead of charge, we want to type in request. Let's copy request here. And what we're going to do is select control the cart order customer information, press control H. Tab into the second field, paste in the request, press Alt A to replace both of these. Okay, and we can do the same with here and order ID, replace it with Stripe preference. Okay, for select uh, stocks, it doesn't have stocks, it rather has order stocks. Okay, so requests dot stocks. We want to select. I know we want to create new order stock. Okay, and let's see. Do we need any other any other ID? Any other properties here? Order ID will be generated automatically because it is bound to the order object. Stock will be bound automatically, and yeah, we don't need anything else here. So let's stop at this. Let's bring out our CTX orders and let's add our order. And now let's await our CTX, save changes, asynchronous. And I guess as an operation, we can return this here. A big this more than zero. Okay. Cool. Uh, one thing I want to do is let's go into our customer information CS file 
and because I'm tired of filling out the form every time when I go to test, I want to bring in my I hosting environment. Uh -huh. So here, uh, all I'm all I want to do is I want to basically check right is are we in development? If yes, just put in some dummy data into this customer information because I I don't I don't have time to fill this out. Man. So let's do this and customer information new. New one of these. And let's just fill this out real quick. Oh, uh, phone number, let's just do, do, do email, let's put a valid email. Doesn't look very valid to me, but hey, we'll have to do. Okay, cool. Um, Looking good. Let's delete this comment where we create the order. Uh, nice. One more thing. I think I forgot it. So let's go into our domain. Let's check we don't we're not missing anything. Okay, so we're missing an order reference. So order reference is something that we want to issue out to the user. Like uh, this is your unique number. This you can use this number to. Check your order on the uh, on the site or get a uh, uh, get an invoice. Okay, so let's create a method here. So public string create order reference, and let's return a string for now. I'm gonna put in a few random characters in here and I'm basically gonna say right create a result as well which is going to be a character array and we're gonna give it a, a length of 12 right and let's create a for loop so in here a result dot length so for the length of our array, we want to fill it out. Okay. Another thing I want to make is random, new random. So this is going to be a random number generator. And what I want to do is I want to take the result and I want to take um, uh, a string from chars. So I, and I want to generate a random number somewhere in the range of the array. So I want to take the random, I want to call next, and there are a few overloads and I want to pass in the range. So char's length. So for the length of this, so however many characters there are here, I want to take a random index and I want to pop populate the index of my result with that random character. And I'm basically going to do this for every single uh, slot in my result. And let's create a new string rather now. And to our string, we want to our constructor, we want to pass in our result. And now when we order reference, we want to create a order reference here as well. Okay, <clears throat> another thing we want to do is what if for some reason it will create a order reference that's, that already exists. So here what we can do is uh, we can use a do while loop. A while loop won't do because we need the result first in order to check it. So do while. Okay, and so and let's context orders any uh, order reference numbers equals new string 
result. So basically, at the end, when it fills up to the result, it's going to hit this statement. And if any, anything like this already exists in the array, she's going to do it again. And it's going to keep doing it until it spits out something unique, which we can use. OK, and then it's going to populate this order reference number. Um, I'm not sure how many unique values this can provide, but I'm pretty sure very basically you multiply the length of this by uh, to the power of 12, uh, might be somewhere in the billions, gazillions. Uh, but yeah, that's that. So let's fire this up and see if it works. Okay, let's add a product. And let's another product. All five of these. Can't believe. I need to put some buttons here. All right, forms already filled out. Well, that's nice. And now let's use a credit card. Okay, submit payment. Cool. So let's check our orders, view data. Okay, and let's check out our order stock. And there's two records, right? So we know we bought basically these items and we know how many of the uh, items we bought. We have the orders here and let's check out my Stripe dashboard. There it is. So guys, this will be it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Again, um, I apologize for having initial mistakes there, but this is a process that you will encounter a lot. You will build something, especially if you're beginning, you'll build something and then you will try to keep going forward but because the code base will grow. You will kind of, every time you will get stuck, you will kind of like face these, like when you struggle to write code, this is a big, it, it, when, when you basically struggle to advance your project to grow it, this is a, this should be a red sign for you to like, right, stop, clean it up, look at the architecture, like what's the mess, where is it causing you? And later on, I'll create more videos on sort of recognizing wrong patterns and uh, how to make them cleaner and basically how to... Uh, swap between uh, files and uh, your file structure and everything so you don't kind of lose track of what you're doing. But, yep, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll, you know, I'll be happy to answer them all. Uh, take advantage while I have a low subscriber base. Uh, give this video a like, subscribe if you enjoy the episodes. And uh, if you do get this far, and uh, maybe if I don't ask in the future, email me uh, your site show me how it looks show me what you build i would love to see what you guys are making how are you guys following following this tutorials and how you end up uh, um what you end up making yeah i want to see your portfolio um but yeah see you in the next episode